Hey everyone, this is Facade, and I want to just quickly show you how to uh, create some pretty neat little uh, animations with uh, trim paths and uh, vector shapes in After Effects. And I'm going to do that using um, Illustrator files. Um, I think since CS6, I might be wrong about this, but maybe not. Uh, since CS6, you can convert uh, Illustrator files and convert them into vector shapes um, really easily in After Effects. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And here's a quick example of something simple that you can make look really complex. Um, just quickly cache this. Um, so this is just one shape. And I uh, used the uh, repeater attribute in the vector shape to repeat these and um, uh, multiply this one simple shape and then you come up with all these um, you know you can make this look really complex but it's rather simple uh, let me just zoom back here and this is probably a better view so again one shape and then I just duplicate it by using the repeater attribute and the vector shapes so let me just play that again this isn't playing real speed just because uh, this computer's a little slow, and I'm recording. So um, anyway, um, there you go. It's a little better. So let's see how how to do this. Um, so I'm going to go into Illustrator, and I'm using a Illustrator CS6 and After Effects CS6, just in case you're wondering. Um, so I'm not going to actually create anything myself. I'm just going to use uh, something from the sim symbols palette. Uh, symbols is under window. I can't really see the the file the file menu up here. Um, go under window and select symbols if you don't have this palette up. And I'm just going to select this one shape here, the ribbon. I call it squiggly line. I'm going to scale it up. But right now, this isn't that useful to me because I can't access the actual curves. All right, so we need to convert this into a, a, an actual object that has the curves and all that. So we're going to go to Object, again, up on the File uh, menu, go to Object, and then select Expand. And that's going to bring up the Expand dialog box. Just choose OK, make sure Object and Fill are selected. So now, as you can see, the curves are selected, OK? And that's what we want. So we're going to save this out. And I'm going to save this out as, uh, let's call this um, a ribbon, ribbon AI. Let's save it to my desktop for now. And just hit OK. Go back into After Effects and I'm going to open up a new project. All right, I'm going to import that ribbon file. Let's go down here at the bottom. All right, and then I'm going to drag the ribbon file on top of the composition icon right here and let it go. And that's going to make a new composition. In Illustrator, I have to set to um, 1920 by 1080. Um, so it's going to open up this file. Let's go to Composition Settings. It's going to open this up as 1920 by 1080 because that's what I had it set in Illustrator. So it automatically opens it up at that size. All right, so you select the layer you'll see that I can't really do anything to this. Um, it selects the entire comp. But what I want is to select the curves. Okay, so if you, let me go up here, just so you can see what's going on. If you right click on the layer, I don't think we're gonna be able to, let me see here. I'm gonna put my cursor on top of the ribbon. I'm gonna press the tilde key. Okay, the tilde key. Let's see, so just so I can focus. All right, so right click on here, uh, and I press the tilde key to focus in on uh, this area so you can see what I'm doing here. Because if I don't do that, this is cut out from the recording. Anyway, you uh, right click and then you go to create shapes from vector layer. All right, so let me, I'm going to press the tilde key again All right, just to get out of that so you can go back to our original view here. So when you convert this into a vector shape, it's going to hide your, your uh, original layer 
and it gives you a brand new layer called Ribbon Outlines. You can uh, go ahead and get rid of that Illustrator layer. All we need is this Ribbons Outline. Okay, so now you can see all the curves, which is really neat. If we open this up, um, go ahead and twirl the little arrow down and go into the content section. And you'll see that each one of these, let me minimize this too. You'll see that each one of these curves is actually put into a group, which is really nice because now we can hide these and you treat these groups as a single curve. As you can see, there it is. Um, now we see the outline, but we can't really see the, the stroke because I think the stroke's the same color as my background. I have this gray background, not black. So just select the curve and you can twirl this down, go into stroke and change the color of this, or you can just do it up here. You can see fill and stroke. Fill right now is uh, not active but we can change the stroke color right now it's gray and let's change this to white as you can see there is your stroke okay and like i said you can do that in here too you can go under color change it here change the uh, stroke width whatever you want to do just uh, set that to what you want i'm going to leave it at 2.6 all right so in here if you select group one you want to go to add and Again, I'm going to press the tilde key so we can focus into this area so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm go to Add. I'm going to go to Add Trim Paths. Okay. So this Trim Paths attribute, I'm going to move it under the stroke. This is what's going to give you the animation of the line. Okay. So right now, um, we have Start and End Point and Offset. The uh, Start Point will start from where the curve itself starts, which is right here, as you can see if I move this, if I dial this up, you see the line animating. Hope you can see that. L let me increase the stroke a little bit so you can see this. Alright, so I'm going to do that again. So here is a start point, and the end point animates backwards there, okay, from that start point. And then you have an offset, which if we set this to let's say 25 that moves the starting and end point so we'll start from a different let's see here there we go we'll start from a different section here so now the start point is up here okay so with this we can uh, go ahead and keyframe let me set this back to zero the offset and Let's uh, go ahead and keyframe the endpoint. Okay, so we want this endpoint to be set to zero. We want no stroke at all. So click on the stopwatch for the first keyframe, and then move down a few frames. I'm going to move down actually two seconds and set the endpoint to 100. Okay, so now we have this animation of the line. All right, so now what you want to do. I'm going to set the stroke back down. I think it was at 2.5 or something like that. Kind of thin. Let's see here. Maybe that wasn't it. Stroke. I think it was. Sorry. I just animated it. Okay. There it is. Um, so now what you want to do is copy the trim path. So control C on a PC or command C on a Mac. Copy that trim path and go ahead and select all the other groups through uh, 2 through 10 if you have the shape that I made, if you're following me. Um, anyway, select all the groups and paste that trim path in those groups. So Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. Okay, so I pasted those in. I'm going to turn these on, and now you'll see that they all animate in. The, the other two groups, 2 through 10, they're black right now, the strokes, because I didn't change the color. We'll change those in a second. So you can see they all animate in. Okay, so let's go in here, and uh, let's go ahead and change the color. I'm going to just go one by one here. 
I'll change the color of all these groups to white. All right, so we got those. Let's just, let's just select them all. I think you can just select eight through two here and select the stroke and change the color. There we go. Yeah, just select them all like this and then just go through stroke and change the color up here. And they all change color. All right, so now we have this really cool animation really rather quickly. So the, the, all the lines are coming in at the same time. Now we need to actually uh, just adjust these keyframes just slightly um, just so they all, all the lines come in at random time. So select all the groups again and then press U on the keyboard. That's going to give you all the keyframes. And now just go through these one by one and just adjust these slightly. Move them around a bit. Have all of them come in at a different time. Okay. A few more here. Okay. One more. I'll leave this one alone. Alright, so let's play this again. Now, as you can see, they all come in at a different time. And you can go in through, um, let me press U again. And open the contents. You can go in here and also adjust, uh, remember you had the offset, you can adjust the offset. Maybe you want some of these to uh, start at a different point. So just move the offset over in each one of these, just a slight bit and they will all start at a different point on the curve. Okay, I'm not going to do all of these. So let's see what we have. That's looking nice. So in a few minutes we created something pretty cool and complex looking rather easily. Okay, so that's really nice. All right, and the last thing, um, you recall I had multiple shapes. I uh, had this this um, shape repeated a few times. So the way I did that was uh, using the repeater attribute. So under the, the vector shapes. So if you go to add, add, and select repeater. You can't see it here. I'm going to select the tilde key again, just so you can see what I'm doing. So add repeater. And it's going to appear underneath all the groups, and that's where you want it. You want it underneath the stack. Um, if this is here, underneath group one, you're going to get some errors, or you know, you're, it's only going to affect group one. You actually want it underneath the entire stack, so that it affects the entire, um, all the groups. Okay, so as you can see now, with the repeater on, I'm going to turn it off. It duplicates the original shape. So I'm going to open up the repeater. The repeater attribute has its own transform node here. So there's two transform nodes, one for the entire group and also the a transform node for the repeater itself. Okay. So if you open up the repeater transform, you can uh, tell it to uh, Right now, the position is set to 100 and 0. If we set this to 0 and 0 for the position, all the repeaters are in the middle right now. Um, so if we make more than three copies, let's say 10, you can see that we actually have 16 copies all in the same area. And if we move this uh, position on the X, you'll see that all those copies exist. Okay. So let me set this back to 0. Let me just go down to... Uh, Four copies and let's see here what we want to do is rotate the copies so we're going to just rotate this and you can see they're starting to rotate all right but it's a little large it's rotating out of the the actual comp so I'm going to go to the the main transform node all right that affects all the groups down at the bottom I'm going to scale the shape down to like say 30 percent so now you can actually see the shape in all the shapes are duplicating within the comp. 
Okay, I'm going to actually scale this down a bit more, 25. I'm going to close down the main transform node here. So now we can uh, go ahead and repeat this a few more times. As you can see, it's repeating. Now we have a nice little circle. Let me zoom back in here. All right. Let's play this. And just like that, we just created a pretty complex animation with uh, the trim paths node and the uh, repeater attribute. So this is really nice. So use your imagination. Hopefully uh, this uh, helps you create something really cool. And if you do great, and you don't have to use a you know, back in Illustrator, you don't have to use that, this symbol that I use. You can make anything. You can make a house. You can make a tree and uh, bring that in to After Effects and convert those into vector layers. And then um, you use the Trim Paths attribute and the Repeater attribute, and you can do some amazing things. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys, and uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. All right, this is Facade. Thanks.